Hey guys, how are you? I hope that you're okay. I hope that you are getting ready for your uh, video for um, this week's classwork. Um, you um, you have to send it from Friday to Monday on, remember that. Today is, um, what date is today? Today is a Thursday, yeah, Thursday. We are going to do a very fun activity today. Um, we are going to learn how to take notes on uh, the important things of a story so we can make a speech about it. Because eventually you're going to have to make a video telling me uh, the story in a specific amount of minutes or from a big amount of pages. So you have to learn how to take uh, notes on what we're reading so later when you do your video you can read the notes and remember the important facts of uh, the story. So today we're going to start reading uh, Ready Player War, uh, sorry, Ready, Ready Player One, um, page 22 on. Um, that's a page that I left you to read alone by the exam, so we're going to start by that. We're going to write the date. Today is Thursday. Yep. So we have Thursday, November. Is it 12? Yeah. 12, 2020. And then we're going to write in there important facts. Important facts. Okay. I'm going to write it in markers so you can see it. Important facts. Okay. Those are the things that we are going to take notes for so we can. Um, so we can see what are the important things of the story. So when I have to make a video, um, because you're gonna have to make a video, when I have to make a video about the story, I have a sp uh, I have summarized the story, so I don't have to worry about um, having to read everything again. But I have details from the book. Remember, your class works are about the book, not the movie. So uh, pay attention to that. Let's uh, start. I'm gonna write number one because that's gonna be my uh, number one. Um, annotation in here when I start reading. Ready? Last time we were hearing uh, Wade's story of what was going growing up in a place like that. So let's continue. Page 22 from I don't know. Ready? I don't know, maybe your experience differ from mine. For me, growing up as a human being on planet Earth in the 21st century as was a real kick in the teeth, existentially speaking. Kick in the teeth is like very negative. The worst thing of it being a kid was that no one told me the truth about my situation. In fact, they did the exact opposite. And of course, I believed them because I was just a kid and I didn't know any better. I mean, Christ, my brain hadn't even grown to a full size yet. So how could I be expected to know when the adults were bulls me? That's a bad word. <laughs> So I swallow all of the dark ages nonsense they fed me. Some time passed, I grew up a little, and gradually I began to figure out that pretty much everyone had been lying to me about pretty much everything since the moment I emerged from my mother's womb. So the most important thing that I can tell about this is that everybody lied to Wade. Everybody lied to wave. So I have key facts that are going to remind me what was going on in the story. And I can even write page 22. So I can write a reference on what page am I taking this information from. Let's continue. This was an alarming revelation. It gave me trust issues later in life. It started to figure out the ugly truth as soon as I began to explore the free Oasis libraries. The facts were right there waiting for me, hidden in old books, written by people who weren't afraid to be honest, artists and scientists and philosophers and poets, many of them long dead. As I read the words they left behind, I finally began to get a grip on the situation. My situation, our situation, what most people refer to as the human condition. And it was no good news. I wish someone had just told me the truth right up front as soon as I was old enough to understand it. I wish someone had just said, here's the deal, Wade. You're something called a human being 
that's a real smart kid kind of animal. Like every other animal on the planet, we're descended from a single-celled organism that lived millions of years ago. This happened by a process called evolution. And you'll learn more about it later, but trust me, that's really how we all got here. There's proof of it everywhere buried in the rocks. That's that story you heard about how we were all created by a super powerful dude named God who lives up in the sky. That's total BS. Another word, another bad word. The whole God thing is actually an ancient fairy tale that people had been telling on another for thousands of years. We made it all up like Santa Claus in the Easter Bunny. So, so far we can see a fact in here. Number two, Wade only read the internet. So we can know that all the information that Wade was getting was um, from the internet. What happened to those kind of people? The problem with people that doesn't have loving fathers and mothers that teach you about God is that you end up being an atheist, someone that doesn't believe in God. Those peoples are not good or bad. They're just ignorant. It's like if I told you, you are a bad person because you don't know Chinese. You're not a bad person. You're not ignorant. You're not dumb. You're not bad. You're not going to hell for that. You just are ignorant. You don't know it. If I teach you about Chinese, then you would know it. But unfortunately, Wade is talking bad about God because he, never, he didn't have a mother or a father that taught him about God. So he is just ignorant. So in the second, or, or sorry, in the third, we are going to write Wade is ignorant. He doesn't believe in God. Now, why is he ignorant? It's because nobody ever told him anything about God. If, I mean, you know about God because your father or mother or someone in church or your grandmother told you. But if you did, I mean, I remember that when I was little, my mother had this book called uh, Mi Libro de Historia Bíblicas from uh, Testigo de Jehová, I guess. And it's, a, it's, a, it's like an orangey book, a mustard book, and it has a lot of pictures, and I loved it because it had pictures, and I could see how people were in Jesus' time. I was taught. But there is other people that their father or mother, like Wade, they don't teach them about God. So Wade was ignorant because he didn't know about God. He thought that God was fake but because nobody taught him anything differently. Let's continue. Oh, and by the way, uh, we are in page 23. And by the way, there's no Santa Claus or Easter Bunny. Also, BS, another bad word. He has a very filthy mouth. Sorry, kid, deal with it. You probably wonder what happened before you got here. An awful lot of stuff, actually. Once we evolved into humans, things got pretty interesting. We figure out how to grow food and domesticate animals so we didn't have to spend all of our time hunting. Our tribes got much bigger and we spread across the entire planet like an unstoppable virus. Then, after fighting a bunch of wars with each other over land, sorry, resources and our made up gods, eventually we got all our tribes organized into global civilization. But honestly, it wasn't all all that organized or civilized and we continue to fight a lot of wars with each other but we also figure out how to do science which help us develop technology for a bunch of hairless apes we've actually managed to invent some pretty incredible things computers medicine lasers microwave ovens artificial hearts atomic bombs. We even sent a few guys to the moon and brought them back. We also created a global communication network that let us talk to each other all around the world, all the time. Pretty impressive, right? Okay, let me get my charger because my phone is going to Yeah, my phone is, uh, is, it says that it's dying. I hope that this doesn't show on the video. I mean, the, the sudden change of, uh, of moment. Okay, so um, we can write in there um, that uh, we have evolved. All the, uh, summarize all of that. We can summarize it like this. Number four, we changed 
from apes or monkeys, monkeys to um, smart beings and invented technology. Now, why is this important? Because if you take notes on what you are going to say for your video, obviously you're not gonna read this. This is gonna be a guide for you. For an example, I can take the first and say, everybody like the way. So how would I use this in my video? I would say, okay, so these are my notes. Um, at the beginning, everybody liked to wait because they never told him what kind of person who he was or um, what kind of uh, place was he living at. And um, later on, um, he was looking all the information and they see, I'm not reading it. I'm looking at it. I look at it. I have it. It's present, but I'm not reading at it. I'm talking to you. Um, he found all the information about life in the internet. He didn't read the Bible. He only read scientific journals and scientific papers. So he didn't really know about the reality of Christians. And that's why Wei didn't believe in God because he wasn't taught about it. He was ignorant because he didn't read anything about God in the internet. He only found things about scientifics and how people went from being monkeys and they evolved into a different things, inventing things, when went from a cell to a fish to a monkey to a human to smart human, and we have all kinds of technologies now. So all of this is the story that Wade had learned so far. So as you can see, the notes that we're taking are going to be useful for us when we do our video or your video. So you can talk about the things we have read two pages so far, but we summarize these two pages into four facts. Let's continue reading. But that's where the bad news comes in. Our global civilization came at a huge cost. We needed a whole bunch of energy to build it. And we got that energy by burning fossil fuels, which came from dead plants and animals very deep in the ground. We used up most of this fuel before you got here and now it's pretty much all gone. Remember that this is the future. This meant that they was no longer have enough energy to keep our civilization running like it was before. So we had to cut back big time. We call this the global energy crisis. Like global warming right now. Oh, sorry. Um, and it's been going on for a while now. Also, it turns out that burning all of those fossil fuels have some nasty effects, like raising the temperature of our planet and screwing up the environment. So now the polar ice caps are melting. That's happening today. Sea levels are rising and the weather is all messed up. Plants and animals are dying off in record numbers and lots of people are starving and homeless. And we're still fighting wars with each other, mostly over the few resources we have left. Basically, kid, what this all means is that life is a lot tougher than it used to be in the good old days, be back before when you were born. Things used to be awesome, but now they're kind of terrifying, to be honest. The future doesn't look too bright. You were born at a pretty crappy time in history, and it looks like things are only going to get worse from here on out. Human civilization, page 24, is in decline. Some people even say it's collapsing. You're probably wondering what's going to happen to you. Well, that's easy. The same thing is going to happen to you as that has happened to every other human being who has ever lived. You're going to die. We all die. That's just how it is. What happens when you die? Well, we're not completely sure. But the evidence seems to suggest that nothing happens. You're just dead. Again, they don't go to heaven because they don't believe in God. Your brain stops working and then you're not around to ask any annoying questions anymore. Those stories you heard about going to a wonderful place called heaven, they're true. Where there is no more pain and death and you live forever in a state of perpetual happiness, also total BS. Another bad word, he has a very filthy mouth. Just like all that God stuff, there's no evidence of a heaven and there was never was. There's no evidence, but that doesn't stop you from believing to God. Um, we made that up too, wishful thinking. So now you have to live the rest of your life knowing you're going to die someday and disappear forever. I'm sorry. So what is another fact that we can write in here? 
Number five, reality for a person that doesn't believe in God is very sad. And you can add in there, heaven is real. Because he was just told heaven is not real. Heaven is real. I believe in God. I mean, if you don't believe in God and you believe in the same things that Wade believes, completely fine with me. But that's not my reality. The Wade's reality for a person that doesn't believe in God is very sad because they don't think that heaven is real. And heaven is real for me and for a lot of people. So he thinks that when he dies, he's just going to die and disappear and nothing is going to happen. And in reality, God is taking care of you all the, all the time. There have been times during this quarantine that I have zero lempiras in my pocket and I'm just like, you know what, Jesus? I don't have food. My cats don't have food. I mean, let's produce some money over here because I need money. And you know what happens? I get money. It's not like money calls from heaven, but people calls me like, hey, tengo un trabajito or listen, I owe you money. And I'm like, do you owe me money? Oh, you owe me money. And then I get the money, not from human, but from God. So what Wade doesn't have is faith. He doesn't believe in God. But not believing in God is a very difficult task because you are in charge of yourself. But when you believe in God, you're just like, you know what? God is going to fix it. And if he believed in God, his life would be different. But the book is not about him being believing in God. The book is about how hard his life is because of what he has chosen to believe. Let's continue. Okay, on second thought, maybe honesty isn't the best policy after all. Maybe it isn't a good idea to tell a newly arrived human being that he's been born into a world of chaos pain and poverty, just in time to watch everything fall to pieces. I discovered all of that gradually over several years, and it still made me feel like jumping off a bridge. Oh, he's still sad. Luckily, I had access to the oasis, which was like having an escape hatch into a better reality. The oasis kept me sane. It was my playground and my preschool, a magical place where anything was possible. Those places are not real. The Oasis is the setting of all my happiest childhood memories. When my mom didn't have to work, we would log at the same time and play games or go on interactive storybook adventures together. She used to have to force me to log out every night because I never wanted to return to the real world because the real world suck. But that's your reality because you don't have faith. That's what's happening. So what can we write for the next? Remember, you're writing this with me, right? Because this is going to have to be sent later. Number six. Wade loved the oasis because it kept him away from the real world. That's why he loved the oasis so much. Because Wade didn't have to believe in the in anything. He just had to go online. And you, of course, you can be anybody you want online. But in real life, in the real world, if there's no electricity, this world is finished. So all this fantasy that he lives is finished when there's no electricity. Still in 24, I never blame my mom for the way things were. She was a victim of fate and cruel circumstances. Circ circumstance. Like everyone else, her generation had it the hardest. She'd been born into a world of plenty, then had to watch it all slowly vanish. More than anything, I remember feeling sorry for her. She was depressed all the time and taking drugs seemed to be the only thing she truly enjoyed. I know. See what non-faith does to people? Of course, they were what eventually killed her. Oh, so she died from an overdose because she was taking drugs. When I was 11 years old, she shot a bad batch of something into her arm and died on a ratty fold out. Sofa, bed while listening to music on an old MP3 player I repaired and given to her previous Christmas. That's when I had to move on with my mom's sister, Alice. On Alice didn't take me into kindness or family responsibility. She did get 
to get the extra food vouchers from the governments every month. Most of the time, I had to find food on my own. This usually wasn't a problem because I had a talent for finding and fixing old computers and busted Oasis consoles, which I sold to pawn shops or traded for food vouchers. I, at 11 years old, he was working already. I earned enough to keep me from going hungry, which was more than a lot of my neighbors could say. The year after my mom died, I spent a lot of time wallowing in self-pity and despair. I tried to look into the bright side to remind myself that orphan or not, I was still better than most of the kids in Africa, in Asia, in North America. I'd always had a roof over my head and more than enough food to eat. And I had the oasis. My life wasn't so bad. At least that's what I kept telling myself in a bad attempt to stave, to stave off the epic loneliness now I, I felt. Then the hunt for holidays Easter began. That was that what saved me. I think suddenly I found something worth doing, a dream worth chasing. For the last five years, the hunt had given me a goal and purpose, a quest to fulfill, a reason to get in the morning, something to look forward to. The moment I began searching for the egg, the future no longer seemed, no longer seemed bleak. So obviously, he believes in something that is not real, so he doesn't have any faith in God, so he has to uh, find refuge in something that doesn't exist. But for number seven, we can write in here, wait, mom died from drug overdose. And he went to live with, with Aunt Alice. Aunt Alice. Um, he had to work hard for his food. Okay. So as you can see, we have filled the page so far. So we can write all the important facts of things that reminds us of how the story is developing. And this is all from page 22, 23, and 20. Oh, wait, listen, 22, 23, 24, and half of 25. So as you can see, one, two, three, four, four pages almost were summarized in these seven facts. So it's important that you take your facts and you write them so you know what you should be doing every time that you're reading. Every time that you're reading, you stop for a couple minutes, you write what you understand, and then you continue. And this is how you summarize something. Obviously, this is not the way a summary is done. If you wanted to make a summary, you would have to take all of these things and put them together. But today, we're only taking the important facts. So we're going to stop at page 25. Then it starts another small paragraph, but we're not going to start it right now. Um, I hope that you have this ready because you have to send it with, um, with the story from yesterday and with your uh, Night Flyers page. So, um, yeah, I hope that you are having all of that ready. I hope that... Um, wait story i hope that you um are being safe at home and um that uh your family is being safe and not close to the to the hurricane and everybody is okay in your family i hope that you're okay i hope that you have all of that ready for tomorrow and i'll see you hopefully very soon bye guys remember you have to send me the page with all the facts that we did today very important because we're gonna have a class work later about that bye guys